I'm always happy to see uh, so many um, friendly faces uh, who I've known from roundtables, expert workshops, uh, where we've always um, discussed the issues of economic development and prosperity here in Pakistan. Always also in conjunction with the issues of um, good governance and um, uh, effective um, administration. Because obviously if we talk about prosperity, and I think the whole world needs prosperity, and especially Pakistan, you all need uh, I don't need to cite you the data. You all know what the last public budget is like. You know the inflation uh, figures. You know the ongoing continuous uh, discussion and negotiations with the IMF. Uh, we are now, I think, in the 23rd uh, package since the inception of Pakistan. So you also know with all the ups and downs and external um, crises that uh, impact this country, there are structural things um, that Pakistan needs to discuss and Pakistan needs to adjust because otherwise the issue of uh, prosperity uh, will always be a vision, but it will never be a reality for a growing number of the population. And that's another issue, the growing population. So uh, you are the fastest or nearly the fastest uh, growing country in South Asia. Um, the growth rate is 3%. So that obviously means when you talk about economic growth, um, before you actually have, um, let's say, an effect on prosperity, um, you probably need a growth of at least 6 to 7% because you need to accommodate to a growing population and at the same time, you also need to increase wealth and by just having a low growth of below that, you will not even be able to grant, let's say, the same provision uh, to the current population. And then it's, of course, the issue of trickling down. We all know that uh, GDP is a good um, measure if you want to see the potential of an economy, a national economy as a whole but it doesn't translate necessarily into individual well-being uh, of the citizens. And I mean, there is a question of distribution as well and uh, a cohesion of society. And of course, if you talk about uh, politics and also political stability, which is currently also an issue, but um, these two issues are intertwined. So if you cannot provide to the basic needs of your population and um, the material uh, well-being is one of the crucial points. If we talk about the Maslow pyramid, and I think there is a right point in that, the first thing is uh, see to the basic material needs. And if people right now with the inflation going as it is, at between 30 to 40 percent, depending on how you calculate it, and people find it difficult, or lots of people, to afford three meals a day, or the current electricity bill is higher than the monthly income of a family, it was probably not the case uh, for the people sitting here in this room, but I would say for probably 50 to more percent of the population of Pakistan, this is a real issue and the savings go into that. So if you have this kind of a situation where lots of people are really pressed and stressed in their economic well-being, I think then also the legitimacy of a government system is at stake. And apart from, um, let's say, the political instability that we are having here, that also take, um, scares away foreign investors, of course, um, especially foreign direct investment. Direct investment and foreign, um, let's say, business is a very shy animal and it can move very quickly um, to other destinations. But Pakistan urgently needs uh, this kind of uh, support in negotiations. Just relying on remittances from overseas Pakistanis to get some positive uh, foreign uh, currency into the country, I think um, it is not sustainable for the future. 
you need to develop the potential, which is obviously human resources. Um, and it's also um, obviously um, your business, let's say, environment that you need to discuss. And in that respect, I think um, the topic is well chosen. I also feel as liberals, we are very optimistic people. So it's also good that we talk about the prosperity forum and not about just crisis or budget deficits, but that we actually have a positive uh, approach to how we would like uh, to see uh, future development. So in that respect, I think it's very pertinent. Uh, it's very much in line with public debate that we are having right now. And um, I congratulate um, Prime again for taking up this issue and also um, integrating um, more of an expert audience in it uh, from academia as well as from uh, the government sector and also entrepreneurs. And uh, also taking into account that it's not only big business but also uh, some entrepreneurs who rather come from a family or an SME background uh, because entrepreneurship Let's face it, there are not enough jobs in this country. So most people are self-employed in one way or another. But unfortunately, most of it is informal. And uh, with the barriers to getting formal or uh, registered, I think there's also a big impediment to growth of this um, sector of the economy, which is basically the biggest one. It's around about 60 to 70% as you call it. So I think uh, it's good to also have um, entrepreneurs here who have embarked on that um, very risky journey, of course, and successfully, and can also share their observations because in the end, I think it is especially um, this segment of entrepreneurial and also risk-ready uh, people here in Pakistan that can actually make a difference. And I think these are also the people that we need to support and to work for. And there's also something that FNF in all its world internationally in Germany, as well as on a global scale, is uh, working for. Because without entrepreneurship and the risk taking of these individuals, a society cannot prosper. So we owe entrepreneurs and their innovation and also their sweat and their commitment uh, to their families. We owe them a lot. So yeah, a big thank you to all these entrepreneurs. A big thank you for, to all of you for engaging in that debate. And I hope it's going to be a very meaningful uh, discussion that we can later on introduce into public debate and hopefully also into public policy.